Now, most of the time, you don't need to worry about modifying flat pack permissions. But when you do, modifying them from the command line can be kind of tedious, especially in cases where you're not super well versed in the documentation and what every single individual option actually does. But luckily, there is an easier way. And that way is by using Flat Seal. And Flat Seal is basically just a graphical flat pack permission manager. Now, Flat Seal itself is actually available as a flat pack, so you can actually go and modify its permissions inside of itself. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you actually modify any of these permissions, is the permissions won't actually take effect on the application until you go and relaunch the application. Let's say you have a application that needs networking and you disable its networking features. That will still actually have networking until the restart actually happens. This isn't just a flat pack thing. This happens with every single application on your system. Maybe not with settings, but in the form of an application update. And this effectively serves as an application update because we're actually modifying how the container actually works. I don't have a ton of flat packs installed on my system, but if you're running something like Fedora Silverblue, for example, maybe you actually will, in which case there's actually a search function so you can actually go and filter down that list. But in my case, I can literally see all of them. Now, this shouldn't be such a big reason, but one of the obvious reasons why you might want to go and modify permissions is because the developer of the flat pack basically doesn't know how to use a flat pack and they'll go and basically give themselves every permission they can think of even if they don't really need them. For example, let's say Sonic Robo Blast 2, it had, I don't know, printing support even though there's literally no printing function inside of the application whatsoever. All that does is serves as a way to open up the containerization and make it less secure. So when there are permissions like that, you want to actually go and get rid of them so they're no longer running. For example, I don't run Wayland on my system, at least at this stage, so there's no reason for every application to have Wayland support, so I might as well go and disable that. And I think most of what I have is actually pretty nicely set up, but I know there are definitely some out there that are little bit less nice. Now keep in mind that doing this can very easily start breaking applications. For example, let's say the most obvious one, we disable the ability to actually render on our screen. You know, it's not going to work then, but if it's something that actually needs networking, getting rid of the network functionality or anything else like that, make sure you actually know the application doesn't need that permission before you actually go and get rid of it. Luckily, you can very easily just toggle it back on if the application isn't working the way it should be. But if you've messed with the permissions so much you have no idea what they originally look like, luckily there is still a very easy fix. Clicking on the reset button. This will set it back to the way the developer set it themselves, and then you can go from there. But maybe something less destructive you want to do is set a GTK theme that doesn't actually exist as a flat pack. Now, this actually can be done, and it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is go and set an environment variable, and this It's Foss blog actually explains it fairly well. This is all you set, and set it to whatever the theme is actually called. So you do that here by clicking on add variable, setting it to what it needs to be, and then you're basically good to go. By now, you've probably noticed that most of the options actually have two names. They have both a friendly name, so network, X11 windowing system, Pulse Audio sound server, all of that fun stuff, and also a smaller name that is the name being used in the documentation. So network is share equals network, socket equals X11, socket equals Pulse Audio. So the reason why it's like this is because these friendly names aren't actually being used inside of the Flatpak documentation, and any of the tutorials talking about Flatpaks and talking about the permissions don't use these friendly names either. So if you want to go and replicate what's being done inside of those, you need to know how those things being set actually map to the options inside of this interface. Now, while Flat Seal does a good enough job and gives you the settings you actually want to be setting, one thing that could be a massive improvement is giving all of these options tooltips. Now, for a lot of them, tooltips aren't really that important. So things like networking, I don't think you really need it, or printing system, it's also not a big deal. But Dbus Session Bus. If you don't know what Dbus is, just saying that doesn't really help. Having a brief tooltip explaining what's actually being enabled here, what Dbus actually does, actually would be 
really, really useful. And I believe in the flat pack documentation, those tooltips basically already exist. So you'd basically take those descriptions of the settings and then just add them into this application. And it would pretty much just do the job. Maybe you'd have to modify it a bit, but for the most part, it would be a big improvement. Now there actually is a documentation button here but it doesn't seem to do anything. This is just a blank screen. If I try to search for anything, like let's say uh, IPC, nothing shows up. I don't know if I've done some weird thing during my installation, if there is a permission missing, or if for whatever reason it just doesn't function altogether. Luckily though, the documentation does exist online, so you can still find it there. There is one thing I really wish this did. While it is great to use this GUI, Sometimes you may not want to actually do that. And Aranda actually understands this fairly well. So Aranda is a graphical way to basically do the same things that Xranda does. In Aranda, there's actually a button to export the command being run to do all of the stuff you've done in the application. I would like the same thing here. So if I go and like, I don't know, add in these permissions, let's say I wanted to go and remove some directories, maybe I added some more as well. There's no way to actually export that command out so I could actually go and set it automatically. Let's say on someone else's system or maybe I wanted to go and post that online or something like that. So if you want to try this out for yourself, there is a flat pack available earlier as I mentioned. But because the source code is also available on GitHub, there is an AUR package if you really, for whatever reason, want to use that. But considering that you're using flat packs you probably also like flat packs. So there's probably no reason to actually do that. But I guess if you don't want flat seal to actually show up inside of the list of flat packs you have available, you can compile it from source if you really want to. I'm just going to say don't do that, but the option is there. So that's basically that. I will leave a link to the Flatpak documentation in the description down below, as well as that It's Foss article I showed just before. So if you want to go and mess around with your Flatpak permissions, both those will really help out. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is this something you would actually go and use? Or do you like to go and set your permissions through the command line? Because that's how you do everything else. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to go and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribers and barrel pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. And I almost went into my old outro there. So that's going to be it for me. So I'm out. <laughs>